look, I'll never say that doing drugs, um, mind altering drugs that also alter hormone levels in the body is, is good. Okay. For bodybuilding, because it's not okay. When I was, you know, in, in my heyday of training where I was putting on all my massive amounts of size for the five to seven years, I did it the first you know part of my career. I never had to drink alcohol. I never did any drugs whatsoever other than bodybuilding drugs because I didn't want anything sabotaging anything I did. And that's not to say that you can't have a drink or you can't smoke, you know, some weed if you want. I just chose to not put anything into my body that was not going to be productively building and repairing muscle. If you want to rationalize that weed calms you down and maybe you have an anxiety disorder, which maybe then that is beneficial to you. But I think a lot of people use it as an excuse because they want to do something that's kind of an escape. Now, having said that, I know guys that smoke weed on a regular basis that, you know, because you, you would think if you smoke marijuana, that's going to make you want to cheat on your diet because it gives you the munchies. Guys who smoke weed all the time, it doesn't even make them hungry anymore, a lot of those guys. So some of these guys will smoke it like off you know, in the contest prep to kind of relax them and, and take their mind off of the food. Once again, I don't endorse that, you know, when you're competing at the highest level, but for some people they need that and it, and it works and it's, it's functional. So I'm, I would never condemn it that, you know, some people need it and some people do it and have good results from it. My suggestion is don't just smoke weed or start smoking weed because so-and-so IFBB pro does it. He might be in a completely different situation as you. Maybe he has an anxiety disorder. Maybe he has, you know, stuff that's going on in his life that you don't know about. So don't just add drugs because you think, you know, and I made that mistake. And so I'm not, I, you know, Dan Duchesne, when I was coming up, was the big new Bane advocate. And he was like, oh, new Bane, it reduces cortisol levels. It'll help you train harder. It takes the appetite away when you're dieting. And, and, and he was right. It did all that stuff. But it also was, it was very addictive. And I was addicted to it for like, you know, I was using it for five years straight. And then finally, I just said, you know what, this is, this is crazy. You know, I know I, I like it. It wasn't like it was, I wasn't like bankrupting myself on it, you know, and it was like, it was a functional type of thing. Uh, I was still working hard, but I'm like, I'm a, essentially a functional drug addict. So I stopped it. You know, it was, it was brutal the first obviously week, but I got, and I never, I never ever did it again because I realized that I was, it, I was, I was make I was rationalizing the use of it and. It wasn't helping my bodybuilding. It wasn't helping my life. It was kind of making me a little lazy too, if anything, you know, because it's like every time you just don't feel good or you don't want to do something, you just kind of take a shot of Nubain and it relaxes you. And I think that's what a lot of people do with weed. So if the drugs are making you, if weed is making you lazy and you're not, you know, being the bodybuilder that you should be not only in the gym, but business wise too, then, then it's not functional for you. So you, you have to evaluate this on a person by person basis. And, and if it works and it's functional, great. If it doesn't, and you're just doing it because you think everyone else is doing it, bad, that's a bad decision.